Okay, the first fly that I'm going to tie is the cicada, or my indicator fly. And I'm going to use a streamer hook. It's a Daiichi 1750, and it's a size 8. I put it in my vise. And I have some uh, Danville flat wax nylon. I don't want to wrap it back. it right about to the just before the barb there and I'm going to start off with some olive deer hair this is basically a rubber legged goddard caddis it's got a little frills on it I want to set it Right on the hook shank there. Push down on it. I got a couple of wraps and then just pull it toward me. Flare it up in a little ball. Then wrap it back. Put a couple of half inches in there. And I like to use a little fleximant. kind of glue to keep that bunch from rolling around too much. Take another bunch of this here. And this I'm going to roll on the bottom because I want to make this fly visible to me in rough water so I can watch it. Nine times out of ten, I have a zebra midge or a uh, copper john or stonefly pattern suspended underneath it. So I'll put a little, put that right on the bottom. Take a little bit of black deer hair. Set that right on top. Take two thread wraps and then put pressure on the top of it. And pull down with my uh, thread. And you can see I made a nice foundation of black. Now I'll take a little bit of white. Fish doesn't see this too much. That's for me. thread wraps and this one I want to cap up so I'm going to uh, grab and kind of support the sides and just pull down and then bring that up bring it back take a couple of thread wraps keep tension on it put a couple of half hitches in there I'm going to take this little brassy and pack it remember when you're packing these Flies to support the back end or it'll slide right off the hook. A little head cement. Okay, now we're going to do a couple more of these. A lot of these deer hair flies are repetitious. Right on there. 
side. A couple of wraps and then roll that on the bottom. Take a little bit of black. Cut the tips and butts off. Put that right on top. Fan that out. And take some white. This is a great fly for float trip down to South Fork. Okay, support the side. One more. I want to leave myself about a quarter inch there. Pack that in. Put a couple more half inches in there. If that thread doesn't behave like you want it, sometimes if you take a little a couple of turns and It'll just turn around and darn near make it make that uh, half hitch for itself. Okay, I'm taking the last lump of deer here for the bottom. Kind of forty five and then roll that over. Last cup of black. Put that in there and put pressure on the top. Fan that material around. And then our, my white. that up on there and pull straight down. Pack it in. Head cement. Okay, now I'm done with the, the hair work on this fly. So I want to trim this up. So I'm going to take my scissors. Find the, the hook. I know it's in here somewhere. I'll trim that down. Because we want to open up that head gate. Get it fairly flat. And I'm going to cut an angle, like a, a caddis or a uh, cicada. I'm going to rough cut the top. Starting to look like a neat little bug now on it. I get my double edged razor blade. I 
I want to try not to blow this fly up by cutting it too much of it off. Again, I want to hit the sides. Kind of round it off a little bit so it's not sharp. Okay, now this is a, a little trick. One of my uh, teachers, Andy Pullion, taught me on how to finish the back end of a caddis or a cicada. Is pinch the body and Follow that curvature of your fingers with the scissors and it'll come out. It won't come out the same as anybody else, but it'll come out pretty close to what your fingers are. And all your flies will look kind of the same. With hair work, you could trim these things until you're satisfied. Or I mean, this this is a good fishing fly right here. this back. Okay. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some antenna. I'll take some of this uh, bass hackle that I got. Take a couple of hackles off and strip them. I want these antennas about as long as the hook. So I'll just strip the feathers. The uh, bar wheels off here. Okay, these uh, hackles have natural curvatures also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them face to face and then they're going to naturally curve out. And I want these about the length of the hook shank. So I'll get some A dot. You can use six or eight dot thread. I happen to have A dot with me right there. Those on the hook shank, cut pretty loose, and then I'm situate them. And I left those the the butts there. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that as soon as I tie this off. I'm 
I'm going to cut that right where I, I have a little bit of material coming out, so it's going to make a small little brush. And you don't need to do this, but I like to use that. Now I'm going to put my legs on. I have some centipede legs. Take one of those fibers out and cut it in half. This is the hardest part for me, putting the legs on. It, rubber seems to move around at its own pace. That's pretty good. Put the near side one on. spread out in pretty neat fashion. I'm going to take some of these um, this strung hackle. I happen to get this from uh, Jay Fair. It's a whiting hackle that he, he dyed. here. I'm going to trim a little off to make a little stiff comb there that the thread could trap in between the barbule and the stem. Okay, now I'm going to kind of wrap that, make a little bottle bush like Pretty tight. It doesn't have to be right on top of each other, but wrap that up. You got a couple of wraps around that now. Now I'm going to lift up everything here. I'm just going to make it tie off my head. Put a half a dozen half hitches in there. Okay. Flies basically done. You can do a little. Uh, some trick stuff like mom used to uh, make the uh, gift wrapping. She'd wrap them like that, you know, with a, an edge and it'll curl up. And if you really want to get fancy, you can put some, I didn't bring any, some um, t-shirt paint and put them on the, on the tips of that, uh, with those antennas and it'll make a little black knob and there's my indicator fly